Hi students, I am Dr. M. Ashraf Majru, Professor of Community Medicine. I welcome you in the learning session of cross-sectional studies. This is fifth session on epidemiology. The agenda of this session include recap of study designs, definition and design features, descriptive and analytical framework, steps for designing cross-sectional studies, methodology guideline, strength and limitations, frequently asked questions. Let's take agenda points one by one. The first agenda point is recap of study designs. As I have described in my previous sessions, the epidemiological studies, they are classified as observational descriptive, observational analytic and interventional study designs. In observational descriptive study designs include case report, case series, ecological or correlational studies, descriptive cross-sectional studies. In observational include and again analytic cross-sectional studies, case control studies, cohort studies, validation studies. And in interventional studies include clinical trial, preventive trials. And the trials are con conducted as randomized control and non-randomized control trial. And the overall uh, classification of uh, uh, epidemiology, observational versus uh, interventional. These two categories fall under observation and this is third category, interventional analytic. And uh, descriptive versus uh, analytic epidemiology. The first category fall in descriptive and the last two categories fall in analytic designs. So let us discuss today the cross-sectional studies. The cross-sectional studies are falling both in uh, uh, descriptive as well as in analytic form. We will discuss the uh, cross-sectional studies in both the way, uh, descriptive as well as in analytic form. The cross-sectional studies are observational studies that examine the defined population in a given point of time in order to take the snapshot. It measures the prevalence of uh, health outcomes or determinants of health are both at a time. The cross-sectional studies are very useful for assessment of the disease burden and health need of the population. Generation and testing causal hypothesis for health outcomes. Exploring useful data for planning and allocation of health resources. Let's see the key design features. The design feature includes the population is examined in a single point of time or it takes the snapshot of the health situation of the population. Population as a whole are its representative samples are studied. Sample surveys, opinion polls and census are the examples of cross-sectional studies. Design is able to assess the exposure and the disease at the same time. The studies are unable to explain whether the exposures are preceding the outcomes. In other words, they are unable to establish the temporal association. Cross-sectional studies can be designed as descriptive as well as analytic as already mentioned. The studies are able to develop and test the hypothesis on the same data set. So these are the key design features of uh, cross-sectional studies. So if we look uh, at the design features of uh, analytic and descriptive, the descriptive studies are population or sample based uh, studies for disease burden and public health program evaluation. On the other hand, the analytic designs are exposures and the outcome are studied at the same time on representative sample. So let's compare uh, the scope and uh, the analysis methods. If we see the scope, the disease prevalence is studies mainly, mainly in uh, descriptive studies. 
cross sectional surveys on social and health indicators are uh, the descriptive in nature the analysis is usually done as frequency rates ratio and the distribution of, of the uh, disease is studied by place persons and time if we see the usefulness the these surveys are uh, usually conducted for uh, resources allocation and hypothesis generation from the data if we look at the scope of the analytic design the analytic designs are epidemiological variation in exposure and disease and they study the disease determinants so the analytic designs are mainly meant for determining the disease causation the analysis includes odds ratio stratified analysis correlation and regression models for association and uh, to deal with the uh, effect modification and confounding factors if we look at the usefulness uh, the studies are very useful for establishing the association and finding the disease determinants so uh, this is the comparison between uh, the uh, descriptive versus analytic cross sectional studies now we can uh, see the uh, study framework of, of both one by one uh, the descriptive as well as analytic cross sectional study if we look at the framework of uh, descriptive cross sectional study we have the reference population from where the sample is drawn and the results are ultimately generalized over the population so the representative sample is taken from this population and the observer uh, look into the uh, disease prevalence and looking for the disease distribution analysis for uh, description of disease by time place and person so the population of based observations they are ultimately through observation and uh, uh, adjusting the errors they are applied over generalized over the population so this is the typical framework of the descriptive cross sectional study if we look at the analytic study framework again there is study population under consideration to which the results are generalized and representative sample is drawn from this population and this is the representative sample depicting the population and we have the grouping natural grouping of exposed versus non exposed and on the other hand we have at the same time disease versus non disease so uh, these grouping disease versus non disease exposed versus non exposed provide the opportunity for analytic observations or analytic studies so the analysis is done for the determinants like odds ratio and uh, risk ratios to find the determinants and association between the exposure and the uh, disease so uh, this is the typical framework for analytic cross sectional studies now let's see the examples of the title if we look at the first example assessment of immunization coverage of children under 5 years in pakistan here the study population reference population is under 5 year children in pakistan and the um, variable of interest is coverage of the um, immunization coverage and this is done for the evaluation of epi program in another title iodide salt utilization behavior and prevalence of iodine deficiency disorder in punjab pakistan in this uh, example the reference population is population of punjab and this is sample based household survey and this is uh, uh, analytical design where we at a time see the um uh, uh, exposure factors and the outcome uh, variables at a time hepatitis prevalence surveys by try dry blood uh, spot technique in punjab pakistan the reference population is uh, again uh, the population of punjab and uh, this is the uh, descriptive design and it can be extended to analytic design Pakistan demographic and household survey 
these are the periodic survey and they are national level cross sectional uh, studies and they are for the situational analysis in the country similarly multiple indicator cluster survey of pakistan is uh, uh, another example of national level cross sectional survey this is focused on maternal and child health situation so these are the examples of cross sectional studies now the um, how the study is designed and conducted the steps include framing study objectives reference population and study uh, samples defining outcome and exposures study tools modes of data retrieval analysis and interpretation so let's see uh, the steps uh, framing uh, study objectives the study objectives are framed on the basis of prevalence of the disease and risk factor and sometime the monitoring and evaluation of intervention and the uh, objective may be association of exposure and the outcome so uh, the objectives are clearly framed and study question is clearly framed in cross sectional study the reference populations are uh, and the study populations are defined sampling units are defined and the sampling frame uh, the list of the uh, people from which the samples are derived they must be defined the sample size is estimated sampling technique is defined and the sampling procedure is laid out in defining the outcome and exposure the case definition is essential and exposure stratification is required and inclusion and exclusion criteria are defined beforehand in study tools closed ended and semi structured questions are used and usually the mode of uh, uh, retrieval of data is interview and observation uh, or uh, examination of the records and measurements and these are the three way of uh, retrieving data the analysis and interpretation is through descriptive uh, if it is descriptive design and multivariate modeling if it is analytic design so these are the key steps for designing cross sectional studies now the methodology guideline include um, uh, the study design the study objective research questions study population defining outcome and exposure and preferred data sources some of these um, are already um, uh, mentioned but uh, in the detail if we look at the study design the descriptive for disease burden and distribution and it is analytic study uh, in multiple outcome and multiple exposure studies the study objective or questions are clearly defined and study question is objectively framed in defining the population population is defined with representative samples defining the outcome and exposure outcomes are defined as the disease or health related factors and exposures are stratified and uh, cut off values are uh, defined preferred data sources primary data is preferred data and secondary data is not uniform and complete and hence liable to bias a more study guideline on the sample size estimation data retrieval analytic approach key limitation and utilities if we look at the sample size uh, estimation is essential and the large representative samples are required for generalization of finding the uh, data retrieval closed ended and semi structured tools are used data is retrieved through interviews and uh, observations the analytic approach univariate and multivariate analysis odds ratio and stratified analysis regression analysis in analytic design the key limitation unable to demonstrate uh, whether the exposure precede the disease a temporal association also uh, it is unable to demonstrate the effect and cause relationship uh, at a time uh, 
the utility include wide scope of the utility in health and social context situation and analysis disease burden program evaluation uh, and developing or testing the hypothesis so these are the common utility of cross sectional studies now uh, strength and limitations are uh, essential to be mentioned here if we look at the strength Uh, able to measure the prevalence of uh, factor under investigation exposure and outcome are measured at the same time able to generate and test the hypothesis from the same data set the studies are uh, time saving and cost effective on the other hand if we look at the limitations unable to establish the temporal association large and representative samples are required for generalization unable to estimate the incidence of the disease limitation to establish uh, what is the cause and what is the effect mean unable to resolve the chicken and egg dilemma now if we look at the frequently asked questions Uh, the most frequently asked question can we conduct cross sectional studies in clinical setting or hospital the answer is uh, no as it need defined population and sample for estimation and generalization so it is not a good good design for clinical settings for uh, clinical settings case control cohort study case series and clinical trials are uh, usually most suitable designs for conducting in the clinical settings the other uh, frequently asked question is if we objectively design descriptive cross sectional study can it be extended as analytic study uh, the answer is yes if data is adequate for grouping as exposure and outcome comparison we can extend the descriptive into analytic just by association analysis in the same data set another frequently asked question can we manipulate the data of analytic cross sectional study to change it to uh, it as case control study it is not required if sufficient data is available for exposed and non exposed disease versus non disease the analysis will be the same as case control studies the only difference uh, is that in case control uh, groups are manipulated uh, as equal by the researcher in uh, studies the groups are natural and unequal so uh, practically the designs are similar uh, the difference is in the group structures as we continue with the epidemiological studies in forthcoming sessions so thank you very much for sparing your time